siamo fragili. It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Ernie Johnson welcoming you to the NBA on 2K Sports. I'm here with Shaq and the Jet. Tonight, we'll see the Charlotte Hornets playing against the Timberwolves in Minneapolis. Looking at Minnesota, more than solid play for them of late. Seven wins in their last 10 outings, making their mark and playing well. And Andrew Wiggins from an athletic family. His father played in the NBA, his mother a world-class sprinter. You can see why they call the young Canadian Maple Jordan. Oh, wow. That's a lofty praise for the young man. Maple I've never heard that. Jordan. I never heard that, but he attacks the basket, the basket you know, well enough from the outside. He keeps the defenders off, off balance. Uh, he's developing faster than most expected, uh, but he really has to work on his offensive game if he wants to be It's the Timberwolves in Minnesota for a little interconference action here at the Target Center. We're all set to bring you NBA action. With Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan. Taking a look at Charlotte, so important to get off on the right foot. New year, new season. These guys have done it. And they prove that they know how to beat this team. We saw that in the first meeting. Can they make it a clean sweep on the season series? We'll find out tonight. Well, they come in, I think, with the confidence that they can do just that. Make it a sweep. I mean, I look for them to attack early and really try to take the mental advantage here, the psychological advantage here in the early going. All right, let's set the floor. Courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Setting the floor for the Hornets. Chase in a shooting guard. Also Kemba Walker out there. Jonas Valanciunas is out there with Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And it's Goodman in at the four shot. Charlotte shooting their first free throws of the night right here. And typically, a strength of their 79% on the season. And this year, they haven't quite been able to maintain the free throw percentage they had last season. Probably as close to a sure thing as you can have at the free throw line. And Walker kicks to Wiggins. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. It's his first trip to the line. That's his first personal foul. First one falls for him. The line for two. And both free throws good for Wiggins. Walker with it. To the paint. Here's Chase. Man, he slams it home and gets a little camera time on the back side of it. He spent a while up there on the rim. And I, I like the fact that the ref's going to give him a little bit of leeway there and, and a lot more than they used to. That Kia slam cam replay really gave you a good look at the action. So it's Minnesota now. After the basket by Charlotte. And a clever pass fake kept the D from closing in. A lot of space right there to get that shot off. Not a very good job of the defender getting over the top of that screen in that particular play. Valanciunas with a screen on Walker. No good from Valanciunas. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. And that's out of bounds. Minnesota will retain possession. First 130 gone here in the first quarter. Right side Aldrich. Outside Walker. Five on the clock. A floater. It's deflected. Now Freak. We saw him go on a scoring rampage last game. And, and a really good way to start the game. He's a guy who, if he gets it going early, he's going to give you problems. Here's Viana. And the shot is good. Dropping in off the front of the rim. Really 
really nice way to get your first bucket of the day. Earlier, Doris Burke spoke with head coach Flip Saunders. And uh, Doris, what'd you find out? Well, I asked him what strategy they were going to use at the offensive end, and he told me that they did not want to have to rely on their perimeter game. Instead, he plans to exploit what he described as a mismatch on the interior, saying, quote, we have the talent inside to make things very difficult on them. We're going to use it. Kevin? Thanks again, Doris. Oh, Maestro, he is so good at making those lead passes, like conducting an orchestra. Shots good by Walker. You can just see the passion and love with which he plays the game. You see how he prepares, the work ethic, the way he interacts with his teammates. And when he hits the floor, it's all about the game. And here comes Walker leading the fast break. His second shot goes in off to a good start, two for two. And I like how he puts himself in position there to finish on the break. Yeah, you know, that's what we call seeing and feeling the game. Excellent read of how that play was going to develop and where the ball was going. That's stuff that you oftentimes can't teach, Greg. Very dangerous to leave a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. Goodman. Wiggins with some nice D. That's the kind of D you need when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were all over him. And Walker kicks to Towns. In the corner, it's Wiggins. Towns with it. Alan Junis is there. That one goes. Count. Really nice job to convert the putback opportunity there. I mean, he stayed with that play from start to finish. That's something we say about him a lot. Now, here's Walker. Right now, averaging about five it's points a game. A perfect four for four for him to start this game out. Yeah, he's looking good. He's got a nice bounce in his step to start. And Walker kicks to Aldridge. And a big bounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. How about the screen that frees him up, though, for the jumper? So an almost entirely new group in now for Charlotte. Timberwolves trail by 12. Sanford, covered by Chase, passes to Walker. Here's the screen. At the top of the key, Towns. That falls. Nice feed that time from Walker. Six points for Carl Anthony Towns. And for the Hornets, Chase. He's in a shooting guard. He's out there with Austin Rivers. Caldwell Pope out there with Jonas Valanciunas. And it's Goodman in at the four. The Timberwolves shooting has been a little ragged, just 38% from the field. Dishes to Aldridge. Aldridge double teamed. Pass to Towns. Four on the shot clock. There's Walker with the three, and the shot is good. Walker's got it back down to within single digits for the Timberwolves. Rivers kicks to Freak. And again, Charlotte with the triple. It only took them a few seconds to answer the three ball with one of their own. Greg, we've got a three-point battle taking shape here. Now, here's Walker. He's making his presence felt offensively with his scoring average up there at almost 13 points a game. Here's Rivers. The 12-point lead, their biggest of the game. Aldwell Pope dishes to Freak. Tries again, and the layup is good. And the defense just gets caught standing around that time and giving up the second-chance opportunity. You know, that just can't happen. They need much more effort than that on the glass. There's the pick. Aldridge, the pass to Walker. Aldridge sets up the pick now for Walker. Back to Aldridge. Charity stripe shot off the left rim and out. Last outing for Charlotte, they won that game against the Brooklyn Nets. And how about the game plan that was constructed for that one? I mean, it was apparent how powerless the D was to stop it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, they just didn't have an answer for anything they threw at them. Here's Walker following the basket by Freak. Aldridge with a screen on Rivers. And Walker kicks to Aldridge. To halt the run, and Towns gets it to go. Yeah, how about the purpose with which he's crashing the backboards right now? Some hard-earned second-chance points. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. 
Doris, what do you have? Well, Kev, Freak in the last matchup against the Nets really lit it up. He dropped in a staggering amount of points, and that scoring outburst set a new season high for him in what was a great exhibition on his part. Absolutely amazing numbers from him in what was truly a memorable performance for him and for us, Kevin. All right, Doris, thank you. He played at a level that very few players are capable of playing. And, and you know, I'll be interested to see how much he's got left in the tank. I mean, that performance had to take a lot out of him. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes supreme confidence can increase your stamina and endurance. So I'll be interested to see how that affects his play. Jim Gilchrist is shoved in for Charlotte. And that'll be Charlotte as it goes out of bounds. Hornets retain possession. Andrew Wiggins, who's checked in for Minnesota. About three minutes played so far in the second quarter. Timberwolves trail by 11. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Here's Viana. Second shot opportunity. And the rejection by Valanciunas. And here they come. Here's Chase, and that one is hammered home. Taking it to the rack awesome. with power right there. And oh. hammering down with the two-handed slam. Just piling on the lead with a dunk like that. Now, here's Walker. Viana, he's covered by Chase. And it's going to be a three-second call. Clearly a mental lapse and at an inopportune time. Yeah, that's a terrible mistake, Greg, to make it any time. But it's really exacerbated when you make it at this time. And the Timberwolves making a change here. Spates has checked in. The Hornets also changing it up. Alexis Aginsa has checked in for Jonas Valanciunas. And it's Kemba Walker in for Rivers. Shot clock at six. And two shots coming up at the line as he gets fouled on the shot. And we have a moment to take a look at the best three-point shooting teams in the NBA. The Hornets, number one. You know, unlike some of the other team statistics, there are a few key guys who have helped get them to the top of the leaderboard more than other okay. teams. I mean, this is an outstanding three-point shooting team. They take advantage of their strengths by getting good looks from behind the arc. And the Hornets making a change here. Robinson's checked in. Timberwolves trail by 15. And Mag hits to Wiggins. There's 154 left in the first half. And here we go with Kid Gilchrist heading to the hoop. Well, guys, they didn't waste that fast break opportunity. Good aggressive pass to get his teammate to the rim. I love it. For Minnesota, they've gotten a little under 50% of their second quarter shots to find the mark. Four of nine all told. Mack dishes to Wiggins. Kid Gilchrist with the steal. 124 left to play in the first half. Freak with it, now defended by Wiggins, and stolen by Spates. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. And what's your take, guys, on the hustle steps for the Hornets? You know, they've done a great shooting. That'll do it for the first half.